In the first presidential race after the Me Too movement, a debate is brewing over whether Joe Biden should respond to a recent allegation of sexual assault. Tara Reid accused Biden publicly last year of touching her neck and shoulders when she worked in his Senate office. That was during the 1990s. Then last month, she changed her story to include a claim of sexual assault. Biden's campaign has denied the accusations. Investigations by major news organizations, including CBS News, have been inconclusive. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi came to Biden's defense Thursday, just days after formally endorsing his presidential campaign. I have complete respect for the whole Me Too movement. I have four daughters and one son. And uh, there's a lot of excitement around the idea that women will be heard and be listened to. There is also due process, and uh, the fact that Joe Biden is Joe Biden, uh, we, there's been s statements from his campaign, or not his campaign, but his former employees who ran his offices and the rest, that there was never any record. I have great comfort level uh, with uh, the situation as I see it, uh, with all the respect in the world for any woman who comes forward, uh, with all the highest regard for Joe Biden. CBSN political reporter Caitlin Huey Burns has been following this story and joins me now. So, Caitlin, tell us more about this allegation and efforts to corroborate it. That's right. Well, Joe Biden himself, we have just learned, is supposed to go on MSNBC tomorrow morning to address these allegations. And that would be the first time in the 30 or so days since Tara Reid brought these allegations forward that Joe Biden will have made a public statement himself. So that's significant. And that comes as pressure has been building from Democrats for Joe Biden to come out and address this. Now, his campaign has said that uh, this did not happen, that this allegation is completely false. Uh, what we have learned over the past uh, few days that have kind of breathed new life into these allegations are reports showing that uh, a neighbor and a brother of Tara Reid have corroborated her account. Uh, and we've, we've seen uh, several questions being raised about her account over the past uh, several weeks and months since she had brought this forward. Uh, initially, when she had talked about the way in which Biden made her feel uncomfortable, she did not talk about any sexual assault. That came in a later interview. Uh, so there have been questions about those stories. Uh, but because Biden hasn't addressed this in person publicly, uh, uh, um, it has raised a lot of, of questions. And so you can see that the pressure has been building on his campaign to address this. And it looks like they will take that step tomorrow. So House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says that she is, quote, satisfied with the Biden campaign's response. How important is her support in this matter? Well, in the absence of a statement from Biden himself, it has really fallen to women lawmakers and leaders to come to his defense. And so it's significant Pelosi's comments there. Uh, but we've also seen that this comes uh, against the backdrop of Biden starting the process to pick a running mate. And remember, he said that he will absolutely pick a woman running mate. So several of those potential contenders like Kamala Harris, Amy Klobuchar, Stacey Abrams, Gretchen Whitmer and others have been out doing interviews, trying to talk about the pandemic that's going on and the national response. Uh, they've been wanting to be critical of Trump's response, but at every turn, they have to also answer these questions about these allegations against Biden. And because Biden himself hadn't been out there uh, answering questions uh, or being asked them, it really f uh, falls onto these women and kind of makes this a difficult uh, position for them to be in. Uh, as these veep stakes are going on, it kind of adds another layer uh, to the uh, uh, job description, really. Uh, and so that's one element of this. Um, I should note that Biden has not had a press conference since April 2nd. He has done several media interviews where he has not been asked about these allegations that, of course, will change tomorrow. So I want to ask about another dimension to this story as well. Given, Caitlin, what we saw during the confirmation process for Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh, 
Could this situation now put Democrats in a difficult position going into November? I think this presents a real challenge for Democrats, and that's why you've seen many of them kind of urging, at least privately, Biden to come forward and clear the air a little bit more, or at least provide some kind of public statement, uh, because you are right to mention those Kavanaugh hearings. Democrats have made a point to kind of try and claim the moral high ground on the issue of sexual assault and harassment in this era of Me Too, going back to when senators ousted uh, Al Franken over allegations made against him. That was kind of a, a real first step in this effort by Democrats to be able to um, kind of clear their own decks and uh, declare themselves the authority on, on these kinds of things. And uh, they really set a bar for themselves. And so that's why when we come to allegations like this one, it does raise a lot of questions about Democrats, uh, especially those who served on the Judiciary Committee during the Kavanaugh hearings. Uh, several of them, Kamala Harris, Amy Klobuchar, uh, to name a few, are considered to be potential running mates for Joe Biden. So this also raises an additional layer uh, of, of scrutiny and questions uh, about that. And that's why you've seen this pressure building from Democrats for Joe Biden to address this issue. Now, when we look at the statements coming from some of these women lawmakers and newsmakers responding to this, they have said that Tara Reid has the right to be heard, that she should be heard, uh, and that uh, these kinds of allegations should be taken seriously. On the other hand, they are also vouching for uh, Biden's credentials on this as well. His campaign has pointed to the way in which he co-authored the re reauthorization of the Violence Against Women Act and has kind of made uh, his public life about this. Uh, but again, this does raise a lot of challenges for Democrats if they don't address this right now and raises questions about how they can kind of keep this issue going in November. So this is one accusation against Joe Biden. President Trump has faced dozens of accusations from women. Some may ask, is Joe Biden being held to a different standard? And if so, is it clear why? It is important to note that this is just one allegation and there have not been any others that have come forward against Joe Biden. So that's an important distinction. But I think the reason that you are seeing this pressure applied is because Democrats have set this standard for themselves. So you can argue that this is something that Democrats kind of have to reckon with when it comes to people in their own ranks, uh, given the way in which they have really uh, tried to kind of be at the forefront of this issue, to lead on the issue of violence against women, and uh, kind of establish this moral high ground in the era of Me Too. But it's showing the complications of that. This uh, whole dynamic is showing the challenges uh, that could arise. And in, in ways it can kind of backfire. And so that's kind of the dilemma that Democrats are facing now. But it's important to note that this is a bar that they set for themselves uh, early on and something that they have continued to maintain. All right, Caitlin Huey burns for us. Caitlin, great to have you. Thank you. Take care.